it says, but as many as met with him, as many as took upon him or herself, accepted him, he allowed, he placed one's confidence, he put confidence in us. He trusted us with what? Power. Ah. The Greek word exousia has been preached and taught a lot when it comes to power, but let me go to the Hebrew. Hebrew is yekolet. The Hebrew word yekolet means to the very limit of one's capacity, one's potential. Power is the ability to act or to do. It is the strength, the might, the force, the influence, the energy. So as many as, you see where I'm going, I'm going back, all right? I have to do this so we can really grasp this thing. Whoever met with him, whoever accepted him, took upon him or herself, he trusted us with, he placed his confidence in us, he transmitted to us, communicated by his word and through his word to us, power, the ability to do, the ability to act, the ability to produce. Wow. To them gave he power to what? To become. Power to become. That's the subject, right? What? Now, look at the word become. Become in Hebrew is yaase. Yaase means to be made or to be done. To do first. Unwavering obedience. <laughs> That's what become means. It means to grow to be. To grow into. So, whoever, as many as, met with him, accepted him, took upon him or herself, to them, he released, he trusted, he entrusted, he gave power, he gave us the ability to act, the ability, he gave us the strength, the might, the force to grow into perfection. You see, yeah, which is become in Hebrew, means, y'all gonna like this one. It means not only to become or to come, it means to change. Oh yeah, that's Hebrew. So as many as met with him, to them he entrusted the ability to change a lot of us can't change because we didn't meet with him first a lot of us can't change because we refuse to meet with him a lot of us will never change because we will not accept him for who he is you're stuck you're stuck in christendom Oh, let me go further. You're stuck in Western Christendom. Let me tell you something. This book that we call the B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, our Bible, our roadmap to heaven, is not a Western book. This Christianity that we find ourselves so casually in is not a Western religion. This is an Eastern book written by Eastern men. But we don't want to have anything to do with the holy tongue. We'd rather go to Greek. That's not wrong with Greek because Greek is a very precise language. As a matter of fact, it is probably probably the most precise. But guess what? The Greeks did not have the Hebrew mindset. They didn't know our Lord Yahweh Elohim like the Hebrews knew him. That's why I choose Hebrew. Amen. Now listen, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to change into the sons of God. Okay, now we got to deal with the sons of God. I want you to go to Job. Oh yeah. Job chapter 1, verse 6. You have to see this for yourself. You see, I could just tell you, but the impact won't be as strong 
You need to see this with your own eyes. Job, chapter 1, verse 6. And the Bible reads, Now there was a certain day when the what? When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and who showed up? Satan came also among them. Was Satan a son of God? Yes. But he's evil. He's still a son. He has to get permission to try you and me. He has to get permission to do anything to us. He has to present himself before the Lord with all the other sons and give a report about what he's been doing. Oh, you don't believe it. Job chapter 2, verse 1. And the Bible reads, Again! So this is a regular thing. This thing happens periodically in the kingdom. Again, there was a day when who? The sons of God came to do what? Present themselves before the Lord. And who was with them? Satan came also among them to do what? Present himself before who? The Lord. So if Satan can present himself, why aren't we presenting ourselves? We're supposed to be sons. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is no permissive will for some of you who thought that was true. Oh, yeah. Western Christendom again. Rearing its ugly head. You see, it says... And be not conformed. Don't be like this world. First of all, you got to go back to verse 1. I beseech you. I ask you earnestly. I beg of you. I plead with you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. If the sons of God and Satan can do it, why aren't we, the children of God, down here on this earth, why aren't we presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our Reason, matter of fact, it's the least we can do. We're supposed to do that. We're sons of God. We got to follow the example in Job 1 and 2. And it's going to sound sacrilegious, but look at Satan. He presented himself. Follow his example in that instance. Oh, yeah, that's right. I said it, and I'm going to say it again. Follow his example in that instance. That's probably the only place in the Bible where you see him doing something right. Oh, yeah, it's right. So that's why it's important for us to present ourselves before God, a living sacrifice. Why do we have to present our bodies? Because the sons of God didn't have a body like us. Notice it said they presented themselves. It didn't say they presented their bodies. But we must present our bodies because we're in a body. We're spiritual beings in a body. And the reason why we have to present ourselves a living sacrifice is because that's what Yahshua the Messiah did. He gave himself up as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, right? But it's the least we can do since he died for our sins. So why are we conforming to the ways of the world? Verse 2, Romans 12. Why are we not being transformed by the renewing of our minds? Because we haven't met with him. Because we haven't accepted him for who he is. 